In today's video, I have some spicy Lotus Field combo check for beating the card Get Lost in the post band Pioneer World. Let's go check it out. This is it. This is the deck list. And well, let's cut to the chase. What is the secret check for beating the card Get Lost? Well, before we get to that, what is Get Lost? Well, it's an instant from Lost Caverns of Ixalan that for one in a white, you can destroy target creature, enchantment, or planeswalker, and your opponent creeps a map token. Okay, well, why is this relevant? Well, when you look at our deck, well, the key card in it is really omniscience the way that the deck is built now, which is an enchantment. We often use Lear Disciple of the Drowned in order to win the game, especially with Chandra, because you need Lear for Chandra. And while you kind of need the Omniscience as well, Chandra being a Planeswalker is obviously a problem. And then our other win condition, Lair of the Hydra is a creature. So Get Lost hits all three things. That's kind of problematic for this specific deck. So how to address that? Typically, when your opponent has open mana for counter spells or removal and you're trying to play an emergent ultimatum into one of your key spells, one of the best things you can actually do is use Hidden Strings alternative mode, which is tapping down your opponent's mana. Okay, well, that requires a lot of resources. I completely understand that, but in order to gain these resources, I've cut Temple of Mystery, a card that I've never really loved to begin with. Bail Get Recovery being a tap land in addition to Lotus Field being a tap land. If you also have temples, sometimes you can get draws that are a little clunky. And in order to avoid that, I've haven't really been playing that many temples. And in fact, I've played zero in some lists on this channel. Today we're playing zero again. Instead, I'm playing a fourth copy of Beseju Who Endures. In the post-band Pioneer World, we've seen a ton of damping spheres out of the sideboards of decks due to the Mono Green Devotion deck, you know, being hit, Karn the Great Creator, get out of here. And the presence of Lotus Field combo has increased, so more damping spheres. I think you want more copies of Beseju to beat those damping spheres. So this being naturally built in your mana base is just beautiful and it saves sideboard slots, which I really enjoy. So I'm choosing to play the fourth copy of Beseju today. The other piece, the main piece of tech here is Seagate Restoration. So why is this good? The format's fast. That's the first reason. So you gain an untapped land. So you're not losing tempo. And that untapped land can cast your Impulse or, you know, Seder or Voyaging Seder, whatever you got to do. And then the back half, or the front half, I should say, is that you draw cards equal to the number of your cards in your hand plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. So how does this beat get lost? Well, with Emergent Ultimatum, you can create a pile that's pour over pages, pour over the pages. I can't talk today, forgive me. And then from there, you would get like a dig through time, a card that traditionally I wasn't a super huge fan of, but in a get lost metagame, I think it makes a lot of sense. And then you would get the Seagate Restoration. So you're building a value pile, essentially. And alternatively, you could put a Dark Petition in there, but that's not quite as good as the three blue cards, in my opinion. And from there, you pretty much just accrue cards until you can hit and strings your opponent's mana, and then you would play your Leer or your Immersion Ultimatum, whatever you have going on. You could Dark Petition for the Leer as well. So basically... We're going back. Think to about Lotus Combo pre-emergent ultimatum. This sort of pile that we're creating feels a little bit more like that until you can eventually play your Haymaker and win the game. You're trying to win around rather than through. And I think that's something that the deck can afford to do pretty easily as long as you're willing to not play the temples in the mana base. And I'd rather cut utility lands than key spells in the deck, which is what I'm trying out today. In the sideboard, we have copies of Silence and Mystical Dispute. The Azorius Control deck has come back in full force, and Narset's Reversal is gaining a lot of popularity, so I don't love Thought Distortion at the moment. And I've uh, decided to play four copies of Perilous Voyage. I mentioned all of those damping spheres out of the sideboards nowadays. This is a clean swap with the card Impulse. So Impulse digs four cards deep for your Lotus Field, which is obviously very good. But Perilous Voyage is a temple play that also digs for your Lotus Fields. I think that this is going to be just fine in matchups that Damping Sphere is the card we're concerned about. We have one Path of Peril for the Dark Petition, since Dark Petition searches for it and makes three black. And then Leyline of Sanctity, specifically for those Racto Scam decks. They're up to six main deck discard spells, Thought Seize plus Duress. And then they have cards like Go Blank in the sideboard. So Leyline of Sanctity, I think, is actually going to be pretty vital for us in those matchups. But... I've rambled on long enough. Hopefully you enjoyed this longer deck tech today. But without any further ado, we're going to head on into the first match. I will see you there.
If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsroom.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Match number one. We're on the draw. We've opened up a hand with a Boreal Grazer, which allows us to play Besaju into the layer of the Hydra, turn to Lotus Field, plus Thes uh, Sylvan Scrying to go get our Thespian Stage, Impulse to potentially find our big payoff spell. So this hand is quite good. One thing that I wanted to bring up in the deck tech, but we were already running a little bit long, was that, ooh, it looks like we might be playing the mirror here. Nope, it's Bogles. Okay, so is that I am no longer playing the Zakama plan out of the sideboard, and that's because of the card Get Lost in particular. And basically, Zakama was really good because a bunch of the decks in the format literally couldn't beat a 9-9 dinosaur. And now decks like Mono White or, you know, the... Boros Convoke deck, whatever, they can pretty easily beat a Zakama now because Get Lost is just a such a versatile card. And I don't think that Zakama really does enough anymore. So here we'll get our stage, play the Lotus Field, and then pass the turn. For what it's worth, if you don't know this, you cannot put Balagad Sanctuary into play off of the Arboreal Grazer. While the back half is a land, the front half is not, so Grazer doesn't see the back half. And our opponent has one of their better starts here. I'm Even with my terrific draw, it might not be enough in this matchup. Okay. I'm definitely in trouble here. Yeah, that's a 10 power creature already. And another Curious Obsession. Wow. I mean, I had a very good draw for this matchup too, and our opponent's just making us look silly. What's funny is I think if we won the die roll, this would be a pretty easy win. We'll throw the Grazer in front, and I'll take 12 down to 8. Yeah, I'm just dead on board. Even if I drew, like, a, a Hidden Strings here, I would need the world's most insane pour-over pages in order to win this. Okay. Draw for turn. It's a Vizier. That's not bad. So Vizier into Hidden Strings would actually be our way to win this game. So I'd have to draw Hidden Strings exactly right now, because Hidden Strings would allow me to... Play stage, copy, untap both into poor. Come on, Hidden Strings. Dark Petition. Okay, so we're going to play this stage here, and then we'll cast Pour Over Pages, and we pretty much have to hit Perfects. Another Vizier. We can discard the Lotus Field. Cycle the Vizier. I don't know if we can actually get out of this now, but it starts with drawing Hidden Strings, and we did not. Okay, well, I guess an out here would be Ottawara in, and bounce the light pause, but I don't think I have enough mana for that. I didn't think about that until now. Ottawara was actually our out. Um, so I can play the Dark Petition, but I'm one mana short of being able to Ottawara the light pause. I'm not sure if I can live through this. We also saw 25% of our deck and didn't hit a Hidden Strings. I guess I'm supposed to impulse here. And no hidden strings there either. Okay, so we lose game number one. Womp womp. Okay. So we're going to switch this back over to hard view. I just prefer it, but when I'm cube drafting, I like, you know, having pile view available. So I like Perilous Voyage quite a bit in this matchup. Just being able to bounce a light pause or bounce an enchantment that might be killing you. And then the Path of Peril. You don't need the dig through time in this matchup, so that can be boarded out. And then generally, I like boarding out Impulse when I'm bringing in all four copies of Perilous Voyage. It's consistency with slightly less consistency, but more interaction. I think it lines up just fine. Now we're on the play for game number two. We have our way to get Lotus Field. We have Double Vizier to make mana. This seems delightful. Our opponent is Mulligan to five. We're going to play a Balagad Sanctuary and pass the turn. Razor Verge Thicket, and no turn one Bogle. We find Ottawara. I like that. But for now, we're going to cast the Sylvan Scrying and go grab our Lotus Field. Sea Chrome Coast. No creature. Wow. Okay. So, 
I could just play a Vizier here, and then next turn, Lotus Field, untap the Lotus Field. I think I might be able to ultimate him next turn. Play the Ottawara. If for some reason they have a Damping Seer, this allows me to play around that a little bit. And we'll pass. Okay, so they have the Flash Creature. Yep. They have four cards in hand, three available mana. They play Audacity on their creature, so now it's a 3-2 Trample. And then they play Staggering Insight. So another plus one, plus one draw card effect. We're not going to block here. We'll take four. We're at 16. A Boreal Grazer. That's not really a card we need at the moment. So I'm going to tap for blue, blue, green. We'll play Lotus Field. We want to sacrifice the Sanctuary and Atawara. And now I will untap the Lotus Field. And now let's tap it for three black. Cycle the Vizier. Hmm, I think the colors don't actually work here. Hold on. Yeah, the colors don't work. What to do, what to do. If I tap here for green and then black, yeah, I'd have to draw something off of the Vizier. I wonder if I could have tapped differently from the get-go to avoid this. All right, so if that's the case, I'm going to just play the Vizier. I'll play Grazer. Put the layer of the Hydra on the table. And then let's Ottawara the Staggering Insight. Because if, like, killing the Audacity, it just goes back to their hand. No, right? Oh, they just draw another card. I think it's the Staggering Insight. So they grabbed another land and we're passing the turn. Yeah, I wonder if I had tapped for green, green, blue, if that would have changed things. Because then I could have tapped for blue off of the Lotus Field. I probably punted there a little bit. They have an All That Glitters, Curious Obsession, and a Griff's Boon. So that's nine damage coming in. Not bad for a mulligan to five. We're going to throw our Grazer underneath the bus here. They'll draw a card. They have another land. So now we can resolve our Emergent Ultimatum. Blue, untap. Tap for black, untap. Tap for green, Emergent Ultimatum. Let's get Omniscience, wherever that is. There it is. So Lear isn't even that good here. Like, what are we going to do? Get back a Balagad recovery? So I don't think we're supposed to do that. Probably Dark Petition and Chandra. So then I play Chandra first, copy. Yeah, this is probably it. I suppose they could give me Omniscience Chandra, and that would be a little annoying. And they did exactly that. Okay, so I can copy the Perilous Voyage here, but fun fact about the Perilous Voyage, I cannot copy my own spells, or bounce my own spells. I think I'm actually supposed to lead on the plus one ability on Chandra here and not start on the Perilous Voyage, because if I find a hit off the Chandra, it's much better. Uh, we got back nothing. Did I just throw this game? I might have. Actually, do, is this just the win? It might be. All right, so we're going to get back Balagad Recovery Atawara because it copies off the Chandra, and now I'll get Atawara. No, this isn't a win. Yeah, I might have thrown... Not the way I want to start this league by playing super poorly. Um, I guess I should get back the Beseju here. Should be able to play that for free, right? Here we go. I just clicked the wrong thing. So we'll get back the Beseju. Ottawa doesn't actually do me a whole lot of favors at the moment, but I can use it next turn. So we have two pieces of interaction here. We're at 10, our opponent has 9 power on the board. Yeah, I definitely shouldn't have gotten Chandra. I should have just gotten like pour over the pages. They're going to combat. They're attacking me. We're going to destroy the All That Glitters. Um, Creature. Ah, okay. I guess I learned something here. I thought that it was Planeswalker as well. We'll bounce the All That Glitters. Chandra will copy the Perilous Voyage. It will bounce the Curious Obsession as well. Actually, let's bounce the Audacity. We don't want either of these lands. Those can both go on the bottom. And then Perilous Voyage on All That Glitters. We don't need a Hidden String, so that can go on the bottom. And now I'll take three down to seven. They draw a card. Light Pause. That was a good draw. I don't know if it matters at the moment, but 
Like, I don't know if it can hurt me post-combat. It might be able to. And then they play another Audacity. Technically the same one. Sure, you have the creature. We're going to start by plussing Chandra here. Dark Petition just wins the game. As much as I'd love to cast a Seagate Restoration. Untap the Lotus Field. Tap for blue. Let's play Dark Petition. Let's grab Leer, Disciple of the Drowned. And Balagid Recovery. So now we'll play the Leer. So the reason, I mean, and I was wrong to do this previously. But the reason I picked up Ottawa originally is that you can use it to bounce your Chandra. And I learned this somewhat recently, and it is that you can use Ottawara instead of the third Balagad Recovery in order to win the game. So here I will get back both Balagad Recoveries now. And the idea is once you have enough mana, you can use Ottawara instead of the third Balagad to just bounce the Chandra in the middle each time. And I thought that was pretty cool. So now we're going to deal our opponent five. We will... Balagad back the Chandra, play the Chandra, cast the Balagad Recovery, getting back both Balagad Recoveries. We're just looping. Okay, our opponent was nice enough to concede. I appreciate that. All right, so I need to not play terribly in game number two. I don't know how we all feel about that, but I feel like it's something that uh, I probably need to do if I want to win. So here goes nothing. Turn one Grazer into Perilous Voyage. It's interesting because this hand doesn't have a Lotus Field. If you find a field, it's very good. I think I'm going to keep it. Maybe I shouldn't, but oh well. Turn one Temple Garden, no creature. And there's our scrying. Had it the whole time. I'm a genius. Kept the sketchy hand and it paid off. Turn two Botanical Sanctum. And there's Light Paws. I could bounce the Light Paws in my upkeep and scry. Instead, I'm just going to take the draw. And it's another Sylvan scrying. So we're going to put Lotus Field on the table, and then next turn I can decide what I'd like to do. Let them uh, burn a bunch of resources here. I mean, I don't think they're likely to kill me from 20, but I've been wrong before. Curious Obsession. They grab an Ethereal Armor, and then another Armor. This uh, Light Pause is rather large. They're probably grabbing an Audacity here, and they do. That's 13 damage coming in. And I think I'm just going to take it going to 7. Okay. We draw another copy of Lotus Field. I'm going to play Besaju. We'll tap for blue, tap for green, play Sylvan Scrying. I'm going to go grab Thespian Stage, and then I'm going to Perilous Voyage the Light Paws. So I could keep the Ottawara for next turn, or I can bottom it and say my Pour of the Pages will be good. I feel like I'm going to be a coward here and keep the Insurance. We'll pass. They have a blade cover scout and another scout. Okay. Play the stage. That makes me wish I bought him the Ottawara, but too late. Copy the Lotus Field. Play a hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. And now we will pour over the pages. Floating a blue mana. We found a path of peril. I like that. Discard the spare Lotus Field. So I could play Chandra plus Chandra making black, and yeah, I think I like that. So we're going to play Chandra here, and then we'll plus Chandra to make two black. Path of Peril times two, and now we'll pass the turn. And our opponent just concedes. Wow. All right, let's take a draw. It's not going to let me see. Okay. Uh, I played super poorly in game number two, still won the match. Sometimes magic is not a uh, forgiving game. I mean, it was for me, but not for our opponent, so... We are 1-0. Seagate Restoration did not uh, come up, but we also didn't see Get Lost, and I'd be willing to bet that our opponent doesn't play Get Lost in their Bogles deck. But anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's head on in to the second match. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, time to play better. We're on the play. We have an early grazer. No way to dig for Lotus Field. 
I think this hand's a little bit of a trap. We're going to go to six. This hand is delightful. So it's Chandra versus the second field. The second Lotus field is pretty dead. However, in most situations, you'd prefer Chandra being in your deck for the emergent ultimatum. But I think Chandra has some value where the second Lotus field just doesn't. So we're going to bottom the second Lotus field. Layer of the Hydra, pass the turn. Basic planes, is this the Amalia deck? And <laughs> we draw another Lotus field anyway. Yikes. Would have preferred a card that wasn't completely dead there. All right, not Amalia. Copter. A little bit of a slow start for our opponent here. We will play Sylvan Scrying. Let's grab an Ottawara. Play Lotus Field. Sacrifice our two green lands and then pass the turn. Archon of Emeria. That is uh, not fun. I'm glad I grabbed the Ottawara. But I did keep the Chandra as well, which is an answer for the Archon. We'll play the stage, which unfortunately comes into play tapped. And then I'll just play the impulse. Grab a hidden strings. Pass the turn. Another Archon. Well then. Our opponent doesn't like fun. I'm actually not out of this game. I mean, it's not looking good for us, but taking five here down to 12. Next turn, let's say they only hit me for another five. I go to seven. I might be dead. We'll copy the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. Yeah, if they have another creature here that's able to crew the Smuggler's Copter, I think I just lose. I also think I could have beaten one Archon. The second one is what did me in. Luminarch Aspirant. So now they're attacking for eight. Yeah. No outs to this. Okay, we can go to the next game. Okay, so this is definitely a matchup where we want our Perilous Voyage. And even though Path of Peril doesn't kill Archon of Emeria, I still want it in the deck. We'll burn out the dig through time and the impulses. Resubmit. On the play. Yeah, this seems fine. No answer to Archon of Emeria, but it's a good hand. Play Balagad Sanctuary past the turn. Both of the matchups we've played are great. Um, now I can't think of the card name. Voyaging Seder matchups. However, we have not drawn Seder in either game. We'll play Sylvan Scrying here. Grab Ottawara again. Pass the turn. Run it with a smuggler's copter. We will destroy the copter. Play Lotus Field. Giving them more mana obviously isn't what I want to be doing. However, I also don't want them fixing their draw and finding additional copies of Archon of Emeria. They have a Thalia, which is fine. And a Selfless Savior, which... Like, I have the Ottawara for the Thalia. It's not the end of the world. We'll play the stage. Copy. And then pass the turn. Also, our opponent's playing a selfless savior here. We're a list that's playing four copies of Perilous Voyage. Our opponent plays a second copy of selfless savior, goes to combat, and attacks for three. They opted to leave open Mutavault Plane, so this could be a spot where they have Get Lost. And actually, I think I'm going to just play my Sanctum and pass. I'd rather bounce the Thalia on their end step and then untap and try to win that way. Luminarch Aspirant, that's okay. Yeah, they're definitely holding open mana for something. And if you're playing this turn, or this game, is to play Seagate Restoration, not blowing the Besaju on Mutable on their end step is pretty important here. So the game plan is to tap four mana and Ottawara the Thalia. Okay. But you could also Besaju the Mutable if you so choose. But if you do that, that's one less card off Seagate Restoration. So that's not really a play I want to make here. They're going to attack for 5, I'll go to 12. On our opponent's end step, we will bounce the Thalia. Get out of here, selfless savior. Okay. And now we draw a way too late Voyaging Seder. Could to use you on the second turn, friend. Pour over the pages. It resolves and we draw three blank pieces of cardboard. Okay. I don't need another Sylvan Scrying. Let's try that again. Pour over the pages. Well, that was pretty good. Discard the Seiju. Let's make three blue. I'm going to cycle Vizier. Untap. Draw for turn. Seagate Restoration. Okay. So I can play my land here. So if we're trying to play around the card Get Lost, you could Omniscience into Leer. But if you do that, you they can actually blow you out with the Get Lost because you're one mana short of being able to 
theoretically play a hidden strings, but we don't even have a hidden strings. So I don't think that's a great play. Um, I do think I like the Seagate here. We have not seen a hidden strings when we're 33% of the way through our deck. So let's play the Seagate Restoration. We're going to draw seven cards. Uh, do we, we missed on hidden strings again. Almost 50% of the way through our deck. All right, but I can cycle the Vizier here. Untap a Lotus Field. This brings me up to four mana. And there's an Emergent Ultimatum. I believe I still have a land drop. I do. So let's play Thespian Stage. And I can pour over the pages again. And there's a Hidden Strings. About time. Discard this uh, Lotus Field. And there's another pour over the pages. So we'll play that. Untap, untap. Discard a Grazer. So what we're going to do here is cycle the Vizier to get to the point where we have two mana floating. And this is actually pretty important. So if you're unfamiliar with the deck, pay attention. We're going to tap our opponent's lands using Hidden Strings because it targets any lands, not just your own. So now we're going to tap them out. All right, so they didn't float mana, but if they did float mana for something like a get lost, you could then go, okay, I'll go to my second main phase. And now you have six open mana. So um, keep that in mind. Although I think here it might've just been a throw because I can't actually play the Leer. I should have counted. I'm terrible at magic. I was so concerned with wanting to show off that play. Uh, don't, I don't know. This is not my best video, but that is how you would essentially do it if you were good at counting. So we're at 12. All right, we'll come back next turn. I'm just going to play the Path of Peril. Okay, and now we'll tap for green. Like, I'm going to win this game, but like, for some reason, my brain just isn't functioning this morning. I woke up early to record three leagues today, and I'm just playing terribly. Uh, it's really the only way you can say that I've played this league so far. But I am capable of playing better. I'm just not doing it. Our opponent plays Thalia again. They turn their Luminarch Aspirant into a 2-2. Vizier, let's cycle. Okay. We'll draw. Bounce the Thalia. Could have done that before I cycled Vizier. Once again, not playing super well today. Dark Petition on top, I guess. Fine. So I could play Omniscience here. But... I run the risk of losing to a get lost. I guess I can play the breeding pool untapped. Let's emerge an ultimatum. We'll grab Chandra, Dark Petition, and in strings. All right, so they might have the get lost here because they gave me the Chandra, which is a little bit odd. And if they kill the Chandra, that means that this should be a pretty easy win. So I'm also okay with that. Did I punt again? There's the get lost. So I read it correctly last turn, but I guess I was supposed to hit and string myself. Yeah, I don't like, I'll be honest. I thought I was going to get the Chandra trigger there. Yeah, I'm just throwing over and over again. Play the Voyaging Seder. I am very disappointed in my play this league. And might as well Perilous Voyage. We'll keep the ultimatum, I guess. Pass the turn. This might be one of the worst leagues that I've played in a while, where it's not just like, Oh, I got ran over. It's that I am actively trying to lose every game I play. Okay. So we can actually win through the Thalia here. That's not a big deal. Let's start by playing the Leer. Because it will save me a mana. Untap Lotus Field. Tap Lotus Field. So now the Auto Aura will be three mana. We'll bounce the Archon. So every spell costs an additional one now. With the Thalia in play. But I can just Perilous Voyage the Thalia. Keep the hidden strings on top. Tap for blue. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, yes. We'll cipher onto Voyaging Seder. And then let's pour over the pages. Untap, untap, discard a grazer. Tap some mana. Play the omniscience. Hidden strings. Fail get recovery. We'll get back Chandra. Let's Emergent Ultimatum, Valaged Recovery, Dark Petition, Hidden Strings, and our opponent concedes. So now we're going to game number three, where hopefully I learned how to play Magic. I don't really have any excuse, I'm just playing really poorly. Submit. Game three, we're on the draw, no Lotus Field. 
I think you're supposed to send this back. Sure, we'll keep this and get rid of Dark Petition. Raven Inspector. There's the field, okay. Feeling a little bit better about this now. We can play Scrying on turn two for the Thespian stage. There's Mutavolt. They're coming out of the gates hot. I'd love to draw a Voyaging Seder here. We did not. Play the Sanctum. Scrying. Go get the stage. Pass the turn. Land number three. That's scary. Best case scenario here, our opponent animates the Mutavolt and attacks, I think. My game plan at the moment is that next turn we play Lotus Field, we float mana. I cycle the Vizier, untap the Lotus Field into Path of Peril. Or even better, our opponent plays like a... Okay, well, they played Archon of Amiria. A true drop that I didn't care about. Archon might be good enough to beat me here. Am I supposed to hold that Perilous Voyage? I don't know. So I can still Path of Peril this turn to buy time. I'm at 14, so I need to do something to buy some time. So I think that this is the move. And then we'll path, and then pass the turn. They draw a card with the blue, and then play another Thraben Inspector. This will knock me down to 12. They'll get recovery. Play stage. I'm going to recovery back the Vizier, and then we'll pass the turn. They can attack for 5, I'll go to 7. Play the Lair of the Hydra, and then we'll pass. And step, they make a Knight token. That's actually lethal here. That stinks. Wow. So I do have a choice. If our opponent's holding a land, I'm going to get punished. But I have a choice to make here, and I'm just going to do the line that potentially allows me to be in this game. So we'll untap the Lotus Field. Draw a card. Ottawara. Hmm, it's fine. And then I'm going to copy my Lotus Field. And then we'll bounce the Archon. We have to hope that our opponent just doesn't have anything. So this puts me to two. We need them to not have land three here. They don't. So currently I cannot cast Emergent Ultimatum. Our mana doesn't work. So we need a good draw here. And it's another Emergent Ultimatum. We might have just lost. Um, ay -ay -ay. What is the out? So just thinking through options here. I can Bail again Recovery. Back the Path of Peril. And then I'm at two, so Mutavolt actually kills me. So if I play Besaju as a land, I can animate my lair and block. But they're more likely to just untap and play the Archon, right? So if that is the line, I then have Ottawa for next turn, but I'm short on mana to cast an ultimatum again. I could Belegad Recovery back the Vizier, which is negative mana, but gives me a draw for like hidden strings or pour over the pages. I don't know what to do. The blocking with layer line also loses to get lost. I could bail again recovery and then get back Path of Peril, play Atawara, and then besage you the Mutavolt, but I don't know how I would ever beat the known Archon of Amiria in their hand. I think I have to swing big. I'm going to get back Vizier. So if I tap for two blue. Alright, so let's think through this. So I tap for two blue, tap for green, I cycle Vizier, untap. My best draw is hidden strings. I'd have Two blue floating. I believe that would still win. Yeah, okay. Just making sure I don't mess up colors at all. Wheel cycle. I'd also love a pour over the pages here. We have eight cards that win. Draw. There we go. Tap for blue. Hidden strings. Now I have to win in eight minutes. I'm also realizing that I shouldn't have boarded out my dig through time. I feel like a dummy right now. Yes, yes, no. Black, green, merchant ultimatum. Let's get omniscience, leer, and pour over the pages. I think if they give me leer, pour over the pages, this is still a win. If they have a get lost in their hand, I think the line is to bottom the leer. Give me poor plus omniscience and hope that I mess up. But maybe that's not a great line. Because I'd still get one spell post. Yeah, I could. I think I win this no matter what our opponent does here. Okay, so they're giving me omniscience poor. So casting the omniscience first, so that way it resolves last. We'll pour over the pages. Untap, untap. Discard the land. Omniscience now resolves. 
And then we'll merge an ultimatum again. We'll grab Lear, Chandra, pour over the pages. Chandra, and then pour. Our opponent just conceded. Nice. So the key to this league is play just terribly and then win anyway. So I will probably make some insanely bad punts in match number three and then get a win. And if I don't, that would explain the loss. So stick around, see how uh, I play in the next one. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, match number three, we're on the draw. I will keep. All right, so it looks like Azorius. Oh, Spirits, tough matchup. Okay. I mean, at least we opened up on a Grazer start. I'm trying to be optimistic here, but it's just not a very good matchup for us. All right, Grazer. We'll put the stage onto the battlefield. An untapped land could do wonders next turn because I would be able to play the Sylvan Scrying underneath the Mausoleum Wanderer. They play a Mutavault. Well, untapped land no longer helps. We will block. All right, so how badly do they want that Mausoleum Wanderer? Because I could throw away the Scrying here. And I think that's probably the play, is just run the Scrying out. They let it resolve, okay. We'll play the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. Land number three, Supreme Phantom. So now the Wanderer is definitely getting through. And I'll just take the four. I'll go to 16. This Grazer can hold back the Mutavolt, but also the Supreme. I, I guess it's not really holding back Mutavolt. Mutavolt would become a 3-3. But I don't know. I feel like it's fine. Dark Petition. So I can't copy play Grazer and then put the Sanctuary into play. It doesn't work that way. But I can just play Grazer as another blocker. And we'll pass the turn. They attack, I'll throw the Grazer in front. Maybe I should have blocked last turn. And they're just going to hold open Spell Queller here. We find a Beseju. Let's play the Beseju. Tap for black, tap for green, tap for blue. And Dark Petition. I'd like it if they blew the Mausoleum Wanderer here. I don't know if they will, but they did not. I feel like the card I want the most then is Leer Disciple of the Drowned. And then I'll play an Impulse. This looks like it's going to eat the spell queller. Well, the spell queller will eat it. Yeah. Words, things, you know what I meant. So our best draw by far is a hidden strings. We don't have, I mean, Dark Petition could have gotten hidden strings, but I don't think that ultimately would have mattered with them having spell queller. So if I draw hidden strings, I can cast it, play Leer, recast it into ultimatum, working around the Mausoleum Wanderer. All right, so they're attacking. We'll block the Wanderer and take four. That brings me down to 12. They have two in hand. We draw Beseju. Play Leer. They're resolved. Okay. So I can filter the Besejus, play Balagat, and get Dark Petition. And that could possibly win next turn. So that's the line that I think we should take here. Legend rule the Besejus. And then we'll play Balagat, getting back Dark Petition. And pass. Paying costs. I don't like that. It's a rattle chains, okay. So we do have to worry about, you know, the whole death thing here, but not a whole lot I can do. We can block a mutavolt, not that I want to, but if we had to, we could. And then they slip out the back. So I think that's actually just lethal. Wow. That is in fact lethal. So they had removal spell plus flash creature to kill me. Bummer. Okay, we lose game number one. I do like Mystical Dispute in this matchup. I like Path of Peril. I don't know how I feel about Silence, if I'm being honest. We could try bringing it in. I mean, you could also potentially bring in Perilous Voyage, but I think at some point you have to ask yourself, like, what are you trying to do? So Voyaging Seder can be boarded out. I don't think we necessarily need that. Razor is, like, fine, but it's not great. Like, you don't really get to... Like, it blocks early, but I don't think it's actually what the matchup is about, so I'm going to board that out. So, like, silence to stop 
spell queller or other counter spells is decent, so I don't hate it. But I think I probably want to board out the dig through time. It's also good against like spirits often boards and get lost, so silence is also really good there. I think this is what I'm going to try. If you wanted to, you could also board out impulse for perilous voyage. Sure, we'll try this. We'll lead on the Ottawara, pass the turn. The Wanderer is back. Another Lotus Field. We'll play Besage you, pass the turn. Curious, cur I can't talk. Curious Obsession again. There we go. I take two, they'll draw a card. Maybe I should have boarded in the Perilous Voyages over the Impulses. Omniscience, not a good draw here. Uh, we'll play Lotus Field. Pass the turn. Land number three. Supreme Phantom again. They're holding open a blue mana, which a little bit peculiar. I don't know what that blue mana is for. It could be a slip out the back. It could be a mystical dispute. Who knows? Or over the pages. I think I'm just going to copy now. We'll pass the turn. My best draw is probably Hidden Strings. They have land four. Shacklegeist. That's five damage coming in. Notice how they purposely left open a white mana. That is, in fact, get lost mana. Another stage, okay. So what I can do here is I can Ottawara plus copy a Lotus Field next turn, helping me beat Mystical Dispute. Land number five. Another Shacklegeist. Oh, did I just throw here? Because now I'm dead to Rattle Chains. Oh, I didn't even think about that until just now. Was I supposed to bounce the Mausoleum Wanderer sooner? No, they had two mana open last turn. So I don't know if I could have ever played around the rattle chain. So if I take this, I go to one. Let's just go to one. And there's the rattle chains. So now what I can do is bounce the mausoleum wander. Our opponent got a little jumpy there. They should have just let me go to one. Copy the lotus field. Yeah, I think our opponent just got too aggressive. And the wanderer's back. We'll start by playing pour over the pages. Untap, untap. Discard a silence. So that gives us spell mastery now. We'll play our land for turn. That for black. Dark petition. We'll go grab a hidden strings. Blue, blue. Hidden strings. Use that black mana. Yes, yes, no. That for green. We will battle again recovery, getting back the hidden strings because it makes a mana. Blue. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. That for blue. Play Omniscience. Play the Emergent Ultimatum. We'll grab Dark Petition, Leer. And I don't think I want to show them the Path of Peril. So let's just grab a pour. Okay, so we'll put Leer on the stack first and then pour over the pages. Untap, untap, discard a land. Leer. Dark Petition. Go grab Chandra. That for some mana. We have one battle get in the graveyard. Let's go grab the other. We'll grab a pour over the pages. Cast Chandra. Battle get recovery. We'll get back both battle gets and begin our loop. We'll auto yield to the ability. And now we'll minus and deal five to our opponent. Battle get back the Chandra. And now we just loop. So I've cast the Chandra and now I'm battle getting again. I'll quit narrating this. I just wanted you all to see the loop one more time. And our opponent concedes. I'm going to board differently for game three. So I should have had the Perilous Voyages in the deck. That's my bad. We'll take out the Impulse. And then I keep on doing this. I'm like, oh, Dig Through Time is bad against counter spells or bad against fast decks. But all these decks have Get Lost in them. And this is in the deck to help beat Get Lost. So I should probably be leaving this in. And you can probably board out the third ultimatum instead. Like, you want to draw exactly one ultimatum. Drawing two is terrible. I'm going to keep this, but it might bite me in the butt. Like, if we don't get to resolve a Sylvan Scrying ever. All right, so no turn one Mausoleum Wanderer. That's good for us. Play the Battle Get Sanctuary, pass the turn. I also like drawing the Botanical Sanctum. Spectral Sailor. They play a Muta Vault. And a Shacklegeist. So they're just going beat down here. A third Sylvan Scrying. We will search out our Lotus Field. Two more Sylvan Scryings was very awkward. They have land number three. Now they're swinging for three. I'll go to 16. Let's see if they'll counter another Sylvan. 
Hit Spell Queller. Play the Lotus Field. Okay, pass the turn. They have three cards left in their hand. Four after their draw step. So I'm going to get hit for five here, putting me to 11. It's not all the time in the world. We draw another land. And step, they flash in another Spell Queller. So this is currently nine damage. I think I have to allow that. So if they have Supreme Phantom Swing Out, it would be exactly lethal. They play a land. Furious Obsession. Okay. They animate the Muta Vault. So this is 5, 10 damage. So I would go to 1 here. I'm going to cycle the Vizier. Untap Lotus Field. Draw a card. Another Lotus Field. We don't have the mana to win next turn. So I don't know what their last card in hand is. I could just bounce the Curious Obsession and go to 2. And that way they don't draw a card. I think that's actually the play here. I want a pour over the pages, so we'll keep that. If their last card is Mystical Dispute, I lose though. We'll play the forest and pour over the pages. Okay, that snap resolved. That's good. Discard. We'll float some mana again. Play pour over the pages. Untap, untap. Discard a Sylvan Scrying. Tap for black. Let's Dark Petition. Grab Hidden Strings. Tap for blue. Hidden strings, use that black mana. Tap for white, we'll play silence, so this way we don't have to worry about get lost. Tap for green, and we'll play emergent ultimatum. So now we can do omniscience, leer, and dark petition. Leer on the stack first, and then dark petition. I'll grab a hidden strings. Leer cannot resolve, we'll grab, or we'll start by casting hidden strings. Use the white mana. Yes, yes, no. Tap for blue mana. Hidden strings again. Use that white mana up. Yes, yes, no. Make a bunch more mana here, and I will pour over the pages. Use one black. Okay, discard Sylvan Scrying. We'll pour over the pages again. Untap, untap, discard. Stage. Cast pour over the pages. Okay, so we found our omniscience. I, I suppose we can play that. And our opponent concedes. Nice. I played a little bit better this round. We still won. I like that. And uh, let's go see if we can get the fourth match. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. We've opened up a good one, but we're on the draw. We're going to hope that our opponent isn't playing a blazing fast deck. This could be a turn for a win. I don't know if we're going to win faster than that, but I mean, this hand is solid. Looks like we're playing the mirror match. Uh oh, being on the draw in the mirror is never good. They put one card on the bottom with the Temple of Mystery. Seagate Restoration. This could have been a temple in this spot. We'll play the Ottawara. Pass the turn. Turn to land pass. Grazer. Couldn't have been my first draw. Yikes. Okay, so I think here you're supposed to just optimize your mana and we'll Sylvan Scrying for the Thespian stage. Pass the turn. They have a Lotus Field. We have another stage. So we'll float mana. Play the Lotus Field. Play Grazer. Play stage. Pass. Please don't kill me. Drawing Hidden Strings would be very good for me. They just copy and pass. All right, come on, Doc. Hidden Strings, pretty please. Chandra. We'll start by cycling the Vizier. Untap the Lotus Field. Take a draw. Another pour. Let's start by casting the first pour. We found Hidden Strings. Discard the additional land. Play the Sanctum. Tap for blue. We will now copy. And then Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. We'll cast another pour over the pages. So now we'll have two mana floating after. I'm sorry, one mana floating. We found the ultimatum. I've already played my land, so we don't need this stage. But the question is, what are we doing? Because I don't think... I mean, I'd have to impulse into something good here. I guess Sylvan Scrying could get like a Besaju, even though that's not very good. We have seven mana. 
and none of it is the right colors for emergent ultimatum i could play the seagate restoration but then we have no mana floating so i think it's just impulse into hidden strings yeah all right and we did it did i mess this up again actually i don't think if i ever had the right colors blue blue no because i can tap for blue green okay we're all right blue green emergent ultimatum we'll do dark petition horror of the pages leer got a little bit lucky there on the impulse play the leer play the poor into triple vizier holy moly and now leer happens we'll cycle some viziers on tap on tap okay so we target our lotus field another scrying cycle the vizier untap the lotus field so you really need 12 mana if you're going to play omniscience into leer because you can't play the spells out of your graveyard for free that's something a lot of new players to this deck forget is they're just like oh i'll play omniscience with leer i can play my entire graveyard leer only works or omniscience only works with cards from your hand so the reason i originally quit playing wish the card wish the two and red sorcery is that wish doesn't work with omniscience so that was kind of an issue okay and i have no balagads in the graveyard so what we can do is pour over the pages untap and tap discard a grazer pour over the pages untap and tap discard a land i guess i'll show them the seagate I, I just want to get this game over with there's a dark petition and another balagad let's play the dig through time Belgad Recovery, Dark Petition. That should do it. Play the Dark Petition. Okay, yeah, that's everything. So now, play the Chandra. Well, Belgad Recovery. All right, they just wanted to see the win condition, apparently. So we have one game number one. Silence is pretty good in the mirror, so we want that. We also like Mystical Dispute. Impulse is a card that I never boarded out up until recently. I was told that, like, you still want Grazers, you want Voyaging Satyrs because they're cards that make you faster. Uh, and I was like, I don't know what to board out then. I really, like, don't know how to approach this matchup. Somebody was just like, it's a high variance matchup. You can't afford to keep in consistency like Impulse. So that's what I'm trying today. I don't know how much I like it, but you're allowed to do so. And I think you're actually allowed to board down a land in the mirror because, like, you're just trying to turbo. Uh, so, like, you don't need four besage you. And if you're trying to turbo, um, like you don't want too many land drops. So I think cutting one of is fine. And then the dig through time. So this is what I'm going to try here. All right. Well, Grazer is fine in the mirror because it does put you ahead. This hand doesn't do anything. So we'll go to six. This hand's super clunky. I want to keep it because it has Lotus Field, but this hand is just a trap. I guess we're going to keep this. Put Grazer on the bottom. Put Silence on the bottom. I don't see myself winning this one one temple they put the card on the bottom we rip lotus field that was a good one they play besaju voyaging Seder. yep they're off to a very good start we draw a land we'll play the land past the turn no lotus field okay oh i guess they just wanted to put it into play off the grazer okay they have two cards left they untap the support of the pages that can be countered by mystical all right one card we draw a besaju so i could just play besaju vizier here and then if i draw an ultimatum we win the game because i wouldn't need a thespian stage but if i don't draw anything i'm going to regret playing the vizier because it draws a card it cycles i think with having nothing going on in hand i'm going to just play out the lotus field and we'll pass the turn uh-oh dark petition it is in fact dark petition i don't like that we're in trouble let's cycle a vizier see if i can draw anything good here untap we'll draw off the vizier and it's a pour over the pages so if they search for a mystical dispute i'm going to feel silly but we're going to play the poor and we hit triple land <laughs> ah. all right so We'll discard the Sanctum, and we were forced to pass the turn. Ay -ay -ay. I started to feel optimistic for a minute. I don't know why I did that. They untap the Lotus Field. Three black again. 
hidden strings. Oh, they searched out ultimatum. I'm not winning this. Yeah, I needed to draw better off of that pour over the pages. Only hope here is that our opponent messes up somehow. So if I give them omniscience pour, they could brick. If I give them omniscience dark petition, they can then immediately merge an ultimatum again. I think it just has to be pour over the pages. If I give them pour over the pages plus dark petition, maybe that's the line. Okay, so they start on pour over the pages. They'll float four mana here. Discard Sylvan Scrying. And now they get to choose a card using Dark Petition. Which should just be Leer. I'm just going to besage you. And another ultimatum. Okay, they've got it. We can go to the next one. Try it again. Game three on the play. Wow. What a hand. Keep. They also elected to keep seven. Turn one Grazer. Put in Sanctum. The only way this hand could get better is if I draw Voyaging Seder on turn two. Turn one Sanctum. Sage you. I mean, that's fine. Pass the turn. They play a stage. Sylvan Scrying. So now we can copy our Lotus Field without fear. They grab a Besage you. So we'll now copy our Lotus Field. Pass the turn. They play their own Lotus Field and then Tails End. So I'm pretty sure we've won this. As long as I don't mess up at this point. Blue blue hidden strings and then blue blue hidden strings again black green emergent ultimatum dark petition honestly i feel like getting leer here would be a mistake i'm sorry getting omniscience here would be a mistake so i'm gonna get pour over the pages maybe i haven't won this and then we'll grab a leer yeah this is probably the safest line I keep on boarding out the dig through time and then wanting to get it. Maybe I should quit doing that. All right, so we have six draws here. Discard a Besaju. Uh, we will cycle a Vizier. Finding the Chandra here was actually pretty good because I can play Chandra into the pour over the pages. And then Chandra will copy the pour. Okay, untap, untap. Discard Besaju. Let's make some more mana. Pour over the pages. Discard a Sanctum. We'll pour again. So much mana. Untap, untap. Discard a Lotus Field. Blue. Let's pour over the pages again. Untap, untap. Discard a Seder. Got a lot of mana right now. Pour over the pages. Untap, untap. We found an ultimatum. About time. Black. Green. Play the ultimatum. We'll do Seagate Restoration. Okay, they just concede. 4 0. Let's go. One match left. I'm playing a little bit better than I was at the beginning of this league. Whew. All right, feeling good. I need to maybe quit boarding out dig through time so often, but hey, we're doing okay. Um, let's see if I can just play tight and win match number five. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final match, we're on the draw again, but we've opened up a pretty good hand. I will keep Steam Vents. We'll just play the Botanical Sanctum and pass the turn. Looks like we're facing Is It Phoenix, traditionally a fairly decent matchup for us. Hall of Storm Giants into a Ledger Shredder. Seems like a good opportunity for us to play the Sylvan Scrying. So let's go search out our copy of Thespian Stage. Pass the turn. Our opponent plays an Opt. And they Opt to keep that card on top of their deck. And then they play another Opt, which will trigger the Ledger Shredder. Discards an Arc Light Phoenix. Not what I wanted to see here. No third land? No, they do have the third land. Oh, they don't have the third one mana spell. Lucky me. Okay. Leer. Not a bad one. We'll play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice our lands. And then pass. Another Ledger Shredder. Spike Field Hazard. So they get to connive twice here. They discard a Lightning Axe and another Arclight Phoenix. 
Now they're attacking for three, so I'll go to 14. Theoretically, they could kill me next turn. We find Dark Petition. I think that might be good enough for us to win. So, first we're supposed to start by going Hidden Strings untap. Yes, yes, no. We will now copy the Lotus Field. And now we will Hidden Strings again. They get to connive. Yes, yes, no. So now we have a total of seven mana. I'm going to Dark Petition here because we now have Spell Mastery. And I'm going to go grab another Hidden Strings. Target our two lands, use a black mana. Yes, yes, no. I will cast Balagad Recovery, picking up Hidden Strings. And now we will Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. Tap for a blue, play the Leer. And now I'll Hidden Strings. I know this was like a roundabout way of going about this, but I think it was the best way, so deal with it. So now I will tap for mana in Dark Petition, and we'll go grab the Emergent Ultimatum. Cast the Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. And now we play the Ultimatum. And we can do Omniscience, Pour, and let's do Dig Through Time. And they gave us pour plus dig through time, which I'm okay with. So we'll cast the dig first. If I could dig through time, like my name is Cher or something, grab omniscience and battle get recovery. And now we'll float mana, play the pour, untap, untap, razor. We have exactly 10 mana here. So what I can do is play the omniscience, play the pour, untap, untap. Discard an Arboreal Grazer. Let's cast the Seagate Restoration. And now I can battle get recovery back to Seagate Restoration. Whee! <laughs> uh, that was fun. All right, 19 cards left in deck. We have one battle get in the graveyard, two battle gets. That is enough to start winning. Do I have the third in my hand? I do not. So let's go grab the third one first. Grab the battle get recovery. We will play Chandra. And now we will cast the Balagad Recovery, getting back the other two copies of Balagad Recovery, and begin the loop. Sweet. Minus five, targeting our opponent. They go to 13. We will now pick up our Chandra. Play the Chandra. Balagad Recovery to get back the other two. Chandra to deal them five. I won't narrate the rest of this, so that way you don't have to listen to me. And you also don't have to watch a repetitive thing. They're at three. We will not loop it this time. We'll just deal them five. And that is game number one. I like Mystical Dispute in this matchup, and I also like Silence. So one thing that I kind of designed the sideboard around is being able to perfectly board out Grazer and Seder in matchups like this. So you're not, you know, like speed isn't really that important. Like Seder just gets murdered all the time. So having f six cards to cleanly board in and out is quite good. Um, and Silence is, I mean, they have a lot of one mana counter spells post board. Mystical Dispute could hit them in an oppor like in a opportune spot where like they tap low or something like that. So really what we're trying to do here, uh, avoid removal and efficiently win when our opponent taps low on mana. It's worth noting that Silence also protects Leer from Lightning Axe, which isn't nothing. I think I'm going to keep this. I understand that we don't have Lotus Field, but this is a little bit of a slower matchup. And if I do find Lotus Field, this hand is nuts. One thing that I like about the current list that we're, oh my God, what a great draw that we're currently playing is that I don't need to board in Perilous Voyage against blue decks. So like the Azurus Control deck, for example, some lists have two Damping Sphere on the board, some lists have zero. Do you really want to be boarding in Perilous Voyage versus a dedicated Control deck? Not really. And by having four Besages in the main deck, you don't ever have to think about that. Young Peasy. Okay, so they're opening up on a fast hand. We find an Ottawara. Let's play the layer of the Hydra. Pass the turn. Untap land. Ledger Shredder. I'm going to let that go. So they get to connive here and create an elemental. They discard Arc Light Phoenix. I need to draw like a hidden strings. That would be my best draw here. Okay. I go to 18. Silence was good. We'll play the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. I might not get another turn here. That kind of scares me. Flight of hand, they are storming off. 
Another Arclight Phoenix. Yeah, I'm definitely not getting another turn. We're going to be pressured into trying to win too soon. They play an Ottawara. So this is eight damage coming in, and they still have double Arclight in their graveyard. I'm sorry, it's not eight damage coming in. So there's the opt. So my best draw by far is a Hidden Strings here. And if they have a Spell Pierce or a Mystical Dispute, like, there's not a lot I can do to play around that. I'm at six. We draw Besaju. We will start by cycling Vizier. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw for turn. Or, I'm sorry, draw off the Vizier. Yeah, so I don't have a choice. I just have to play the pour over the pages and lose to a counter spell. Yeah, not a whole lot I could have done about that. They opened up on a very strong draw. So now we're going to game three on the play. I still don't want Grazer or Voyaging Seder in my deck. Like, I know that our opponent opened up on a very good draw, but these cards are not good in the matchup. And if you're going to board these out, board the, keep those in, what are you boarding out? Like, Impulse? I don't think I like that. We're going to mulligan this. Sure. Keep, and we'll get rid of Dark Petition. Play the Botanical Sanctum and pass. My hand was actually pretty good in game two for what it's worth. Like, our opponent just, they were on the play and they had a fast draw. We find another impulse. I'm just going to cast this now to avoid counter spells. We take the Sylvan. Pass the turn. I really hope I draw a land here. Drawing a land would be so huge. There's the Pyromancer. Draw for turn. There we go. I don't know if it matters. So we're just going to play the Sylvan Scrying here. Go grab the field. Pass. So now what we need to do is find a payoff. So, Emergent Ultimatum, Dark Petition, something like that. They attack for three, I go to 18. We'll play a Lotus Field, and we will copy the Lotus Field. Sacrifice the pair of Botanical Sanctum. Pass. They free the Fae on the end step. That was not a very good free the Fae for them. And then they opt. They play land number four. They have five cards in their hand. Okay. I mean, there's the I win button. So let's just start by playing silence and seeing what happens. Hard cast negate. Sure. Actually, I should respond to this. Let's cycle Vizier, because I could find a mystical dispute. Untap Lotus Field. Draw. We find another stage. I'm going to leave a white floating in case I draw another silence as well. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw off the Vizier. An impulse. Let's cast an impulse. I do find mystical dispute. Let's take the dispute and target the negate. They spell peers. Can I afford to pay for peers? I think the answer is yes. So if I pay for peers, I still have a land drop. They have six damage on board. Yeah, I'm going to pay. Dispute. They should just let this resolve. Like, fighting at this point, I think, is, would be a little bit silly. Okay, so now I can play the stage. We can Hidden Strings to untap. So we have a total of seven mana. So I could Dark Petition into Leer, but I'd have no mana floating. So I think what you're actually supposed to do is Impulse, because if you find another Hidden Strings, it's an easy win. If you find Poor, it's an easy win. I just think you're supposed to Impulse here. We found Poor. So now we'll pour the pages. We need one mana off this. We did not hit one mana. But Dig Through Time is not bad, so let's cast that. Exile Lotus Field. You basically want to exile things you don't care about. Viziers can definitely be exiled. All right, come on, Dig Through Time. Pretty please. That was good. Okay. Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. We'll pour over the pages. Discard, or I'm sorry, untap, untap, discard a Lotus Field. I mean, I'm pretty sure Dark Petition for Leer just wins. So why wouldn't I do that? Emergent Ultimatum would get Leer, Dark Petition, Omniscience, which I also think just wins. Yeah, let's do that. Omniscience, Leer, Dark Petition. Our opponent gives us Leer, Dark Petition, which is just fine. And now we'll go just grab the Omniscience. Leer can happen. We have five mana already. Hidden strings. Untap, untap. Yes, yes. And then when you're escaping from the graveyard, you might as well, uh, or flashing back from the graveyard, you might as well say yes and put the hidden strings on the Leer. It's kind of free. And then we'll hidden strings again. Yes, yes, yes. 
put it on the leer tap for mana we'll play the omniscience dark petition grab another emergent ultimatum play the ultimatum we'll grab chandra for seagate restoration not silence come on seagate restoration so we'll put seagate on the stack and then pour we'll float mana untap untap that was not very good so now we'll draw five here okay let's cast another emergent ultimatum pour over the pages belly get recovery and our opponent concedes the game yes 5-0 so the real lesson of this league is you can play as terribly as brian cook and still get trophies with this deck that is how good this deck list is um but if i'm being serious i think that the deck list was pretty good we actually never saw a voyaging Seder until it just like did not matter this league which is a little unfortunate uh dig through time was fine it came up huge in match number five uh as for seagate restoration i think it was about as the same as a um a temple of mystery this league i do really like forbis Aju. i think if anything it, like if you wanted to play a temple over a seagate restoration i think that's okay not that i like it but it's probably okay i think moving forward people should be on forbis Aju. i know everyone plays three but with all the damping spheres in the sideboard right now not that we saw any of this league but i think you just want to be on four of this and i love four perilous voyage just to swap with impulse Zakama, that plane's dead. This is the way forward. We did not face any Rakdos this league, so Leyline of Sanctity did not come up, but we used every other card in our sideboard, so I think it's an efficient game plan that we have. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a great day, and as always, keep storming. What you should do is like, comment, and subscribe because there's no better way to support us. And if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.